This special presentation of SHOT Show 2018 was made possible by Air Guns of Arizona, Air Gun Depot, Pyramid Air, Umarex USA, Air Force Air Guns, Crossman Corporation, Hatsan USA, and JSB Predator International. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Guys, we are in the Air Force booth, but if you'll notice behind Mr. Martin here, you are seeing some guns that were not previously of Air Force. There's been some big industry news this morning, so I wanted to take just a moment and introduce some these gentlemen, if you didn't already know them. This is John McCaslin. He is the owner of Air Force Air Guns. And this is Martin Rutherford, the previous owner of Theoban and current owner of Rapid Air Weapons. So guys, thanks for being with us today. This is obviously a time for celebration for you two, your two companies. Yep. And I think the air gun industry as a whole, I, I know there's a lot of people back home that care very much for this man and, and the work that he does and cares very much for your crew and the work you, you do. So mm -hmm. if I could, I'll probably start with John because this probably started with you. If you could just tell everyone back home a little bit about who you are and your company and, and uh, kind of take it from there. Well, we're Air Force Air Guns and we make black military looking PCP guns. Mm -hmm. And we've done that for just about 20 years now. And we've been in the market back when there was no market. And we're still here. And now that the market is finally expanding to a level of interest where the production volumes are high enough, we've moved into a new facility and we're in the process of expanding our existing line. But an opportunity came up uh, with Martin, and we decided to incorporate his line in our operation because we want to expand into new areas, and he makes a high-quality product. That's what we try to make, and what we'd like to do is bring his level of quality in with our production facility and get uh, higher numbers, be able to produce in volume. Yeah, it sounds like a very natural match. I know here in the States, you know, my perception of being in the part of the air gun community for as long as I have is, you know, quality is very synonymous with the Air Force name and it is also very synonymous with the Rapid Air Weapons name. And I think, I think a lot of people in the States, Martin, you know, know you as Rapid Air Weapons, and, but a lot of people, you know, on the other side of the pond, you know, know you as Theobin. That's right. And, and I get questions all the time, you know, who were you? Who are you now? You know, could you maybe speak a little bit? to you know where you came from and, and what you're doing today and, and how all that kind of blends together sure i mean uh you know i started uh, an apprenticeship at theoban in uh, 1985 um, progress through you know call it the ranks um up to you know being general manager and then we've done a, a management buyout in uh, 2003 uh, so the former owners could retire and you know i was a uh, 50 percent uh, partner in that till uh till we sort of I, in the end, up we shut that down, but uh, you know we moved everything uh, to the US uh, because uh, you know the, the market was expanding here, and you know we was importing a lot of stuff from the UK to here, so it was like just a natural stepping stone, really. Um, and then obviously we we uh, been manufacturing the the, the the more modern version of the Rapid with all the the updated facilities and, and, and specs. So that's where we are at the moment, and we're well known for are you know extremely accurate uh, extremely um, reliable product so so your operations now are in tennessee that's correct and when when did you start up when did you bring operations basically from the united kingdom to tennessee um we sort of slowly started around 2006 but uh we personally moved here in 2009 so that was uh you know when we was doing running both companies uh together as a union so okay and so we've got two american Made in America companies sure. here that, that have come together as, as a partnership. Now, um, you know you have a very cult following. Okay. You know, <laughs> on, on, in the air gun community, yeah. both both we you guys, both, yeah. both you guys too, and, yeah. and it's very interesting watching yeah. it because they're really two very different niches. You know, yeah. you, you guys have a incredibly loyal following. You know, in the hunting in the hunting scene, mm -hmm. and you have this incredibly loyal follow and, and deep followings. You mm -hmm. know, in, in mm -hmm. the in the in the competition yep. air rifle. You know, so. You know, what does this mean for the two of you guys going forward? I mean, I guess everyone at home is probably wondering, what I'm wondering right now is, you know, does Rapid Air Weapons stay Rapid Air Weapons? Does Air Force stay Air Force? You know, you guys are obviously on the same team now. You know, 
Well, what, what does when, that mean for, the, for for everyone back home? It will stay that way for the time being. You know, we have to. We'll have to revisit it six months, a year from now, and see exactly how we want to structure the branding. Uh, but for, at this point in time, we'll leave everything as it is. We don't want to upset the system. Uh, we don't want to have any disruptions uh, to delivery or anything like that. We just want. We want to. Right now, we're, we're going to focus on clearing out the bottlenecks and bumping production up for Rapid Air yep. Weapons. Yeah, you know, I, I'd like to speak to that if I could. Um, if you guys are new to Rapid Air Weapons, you know, this guy's stuff is in such demand, and, and you know, you don't have the scaling that they do at Air no, Force. No, absolutely not. But, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a stall-made gun. You have your hands on every one of them. You assemble and test every single one mm -hmm. of them. But the demand is there to where, you know, there's like a 12, 13, 14 week waiting period for your product over the last year, is that right? It's, it's grown beyond that, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's got to stage where we need to, you know, try and, try and get, like I say, get rid of some of the bottlenecks. And, and there's a lot of things that, you know, we, although we manufacture them in-house, we don't manufacture them efficiently. Like, you know, John's got the machines that will, um, will speed that side of it up tremendously. So if I'm reading that, you know, the marriage, right, that's that's going to be something that's 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 what this is really all about is mm -hmm. taking his helping take his product, you know, getting you guys on the same team, giving it the scalability so yep. that the people can get the quality that that he's, they're used to in your good names and he'll be closely involved for an extended mm -hmm. period of time to make sure this goes smooth, make sure that we don't lose anything in the transition. Right. It's also very good that we you know we both got a good knowledge of the product we build and we. We've been bouncing a lot of good ideas off each other, so there could be some good things to come. Good. Well, I am very excited for you both. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for coming by. And uh, kind of clearing You're that up for everyone back home, and, and I hope you both have a great show. Great. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Guys, obviously the, um, the Rapid Air Weapons Air Force Union is, you know, is, is the big deal here, I think, today mm -hmm. for Air, for, uh, Air yep. Force. But I've asked John, you know, maybe for some of you guys that are new to the Air Force lineup to you know, take us through his product, you know, maybe let us know a little bit about what they do differently, what makes them special, and maybe, you know, what's new and exciting for 2018. Would that be all right? Yep, Great. yep. Basically what's new is, is on this rack here, the, uh, with the increasing interest in big bore air guns, we're expanding the line. Uh, we've already got three calibers of big bore air guns. Uh, as far as the standard Texan line. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to offer all the calibers as a carbine. Okay. And we have the Texan SS that's shipping in 45 caliber, and soon it will be shipping in 357 and 30 caliber. So can I pause you on the Texan SS for a sec? Sure. In, in my world, the majority of questions I get revolve around you know, this product right here. This seems to be where there's a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it that makes this product kind of so different in the industry? Because there's a lot of big bores out in the industry, right? But there's something that this one does different there's, than everyone else. That's... There's a there, there's a lot of big bores out there, and and a lot of the big bores are out on the marketplace. Think that a small diameter barrel shroud is all you need to control the sound, and that you need a lot more than that. If you actually want to suppress the sound of your large caliber gun. You have to have enough volume to deal with it. So we actually have a sound suppression system that works. You know, it actually works uh, very like a fire, very much like a firearm. And that's that's what I was hoping John would key in on uh, key in on for us. These are three, four, five, six hundred foot-pound energy capable yeah. platforms, and and they're very loud. But what you've done, what John's done, is taken that and made it very quiet. So. Maybe you can get that follow-up shot if you yep. need to, or you know, if there's you know there's a deer a mile away, you know they're not running for the hills, and you, yep. you, you guys still got a day ahead of you. Yep. You can enjoy the rest, rest of the day hunts. So that's been key. Plus, be frank, let me let's all be honest. It's much more pleasurable to shoot a nice, quiet, yes. quiet gun like that. Our guns, the big caliber guns, are so loud that even though they're air guns, you need you you you, you need hearing protection. You do. And once you suppress it, now you no longer need hearing protection. Now, on a, on a 45 caliber air rifle, you're not going to get backyard suburban quiet with it. Which is probably good because you know. we don't want to be shooting that in our backyard. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's a term we throw around very loosely in the in the air gun industry. But but the thing is that you will you will have sound suppression levels comparable to similar caliber firearms. Great. Which you know, and these are these are as loud as a 20 gauge shotgun for those of you at home that haven't played with yep. them. You know, without the sound suppression. So yep. You know, in my world, our our world, I think that that's really big news. Another thing we're we're going to try this year in limited numbers is a 257 Texan. Cool. So there's a lot of interest in 257. You know, a lot of people are trying to reach out, you know, get a lot of distance with 257. So we're actually going to come out with a 34 inch 257 barrel. Great. That will be swappable with the 30 caliber Texan. We're actually going to use the 30 caliber Texan valve and shoot 257 with it. Great. So a little bit flatter trajectory. Yeah. Reach out there with a little bit more sting. Yeah. Great. Now you mentioned barrel. And a question I get all the time that I sincerely don't know the answer to, and maybe you can speak to it today. And if you yep. can't, I understand because yep. those are proprietary private matters. But people ask me, you know, who, who, who makes the barrel in the, in the Air Force air gun? Who made it? Who makes it? What's the future look like? Can you speak to that, Eddie? Right now, uh, all the barrels are low their Walder barrels. Okay. Even the big bore barrels are low their Walder barrels. Both are, okay. So they're, they're high quality barrels. One of the, the, the important thing for us is to keep the accuracy up where it needs to be and try to minimize the cost in other areas to keep the gun at a, at a reasonable cost level. Sure. You know, this is, uh, the thing is that we put, <coughs> we put barrels that are comparable to what you'd see in a raw a rapid air weapons gun. But then we try to save money in other areas of the gun because we're trying to lighten the weight and make it more of a utility item that people can actually take out and use yeah. and shoot and, and drag it through the woods and they're not worried about scarring it up. A lot of people don't want to take their rapid air weapons guns out in the woods. That's they, a great point. They don't point. want to scratch them. It's a very tactical look, very tactical approach, you know. Beat them up, yep. no big deal. Yep. Great. Well, they're the made to use. Uh, yeah. We have guns that, that people just shoot to death in their backyards. You know, it, uh, small caliber SS rifles, they're actually backyard friendly. The small, the 22s and 25s, people almost quit going to the gun range because they can, they can shoot an accurate air gun in the backyard and, and just and don't have to make any special arrangements. Great. You know, it's a reasonable backstop. Yeah, exactly. All right, I have another question for you. And again, it's a little bit of a charge question, so if you're not comfortable, it's okay, we get it. We want to be respectful, but you know, this, this breach system that Air Force has been using a long time, it's very tried and true, very accurate. It's absolutely bulletproof, you know, no pun intended. Yep. You know, the a question I always get is, you know, well, do you foresee a, in Air Force's future a time where, you know, they evolve to maybe a, a repeating, some sort of repeating action? We have a repeater under development. Okay. And it is, the, the thing is that it has been pushed back now because of the rapid air weapons guns. Makes sense. <coughs> so, eventually, yes, a repeater, uh, designed from scratch repeater air rifle is coming. Uh, but right now it's, it's, it's pushed out, so it's pushed out a ways, we're not quite sure how far uh, as we work on the backlog on the rapid air weapons guns. Great, thank you. Thank you for opening up your heart and your company. John McCaslin, owner of Air Force Air Guns, thank you very much. No problem.